Heather, how do you pronounce your... I'm sorry, we're on the air. Welcome to the show. I Hi, didn't Heather. get a chance to ask you how you pronounce your last name, so... Mahalik. Mahalik. Heather Mahalik is here. Welcome, Heather, to the show. Thank you. I apologize for that. Um, Heather is a senior digital forensics analyst at Basis Technology. Um, as the on-site project manager, she uses her experience to manage the cell phone exploitation team and supports media and cell phone forensics efforts in the U.S. government. Heather is a certified SANS instructor in teaching the upcoming course, Advanced Smartphone and Mobile Device Forensics. Welcome, Heather, to the show. Thank you. So, Heather, the number one question I, I get uh, along these lines of doing forensics is, Everyone's like, so can I get my text messages off of my phone? And I don't know if they're asking me because they want to look at it as a reference or if they've got naughty text messages that they want to delete. I don't ask. <laughs> oh, they want to cover their traces, I'm sure. Yeah, Cut yeah. tracks. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, Heather, have you prepared like a, a little snippet or technical segment for us? or? I have. Okay, I good. Have. Because that would mean that I have to ask you intelligent questions, and yeah, I'm hey, all out of those tonight. Yeah, and, and Heather, here I am looking at. I'm trying to figure out what's in the background, and I realize it's a candle on one of those big round things. It is. Like, why does she have like? I have beer one of those two there, level. Wall. So, Heather, what um, what, what topics uh, will you be covering in the realm of uh, smartphone and mobile device forensics? So I am going to. Well, I'm trying to get my screen up here for you guys to see first. It's magic. So it'll, it'll show it'll you to share my screen here. Wait for All it. Right, now it's starting to work. Wait for it. It's very exciting, I know. It's Skype. You have to like bludgeon it until it does what you want it to do. It's terrible. Skype sound, sound effects. effects. Oh, mom, seeing something. Yes. We oh, see is it your, working? We see your screen. Yes, yeah. we do. Perfect. I like this your I like your slide sales design. Pitch screen. Nice. <laughs> it's, I like the slide design. It looks like kind of like the Paul.com logo. Hey, it's a market. That's, nice. hey. That's all credit to Rob Lee with the little Sherlock Holmes there. No, very nice, very nice. Okay, so our course is brand new. It is um, one of the few that actually one, the only one with Sands that was written by all women. So congrats to us. Woo Girl power. Um, here's a little bit about the authors. Um, myself, Cindy Murphy. And Lee Crugnelli, also Dominica, whatever you want to call her. So each of us together have 36 years combined forensic experience. Most of us now focus on smartphones. Um, the course itself, it is one of the few that's completely vendor neutral. So that's one of the reasons we wanted to do it. And instead of teaching you how to just click a button and get a phone dump and easily recover your text messages, we teach you how to go in and get everything that you thought was deleted that you hoped was deleted, that your applications are hiding from you. So that's what it focuses on. And here is a breakdown of each day and what you're getting. And everyone can read that, so I won't. Yep. So, Heather, that too far. so, Heather, I've got a question for you. How, uh, and I see that you've got one day for other smartphone devices. How, yes. much, how much focus do you actually have on uh, whether they be uh, BlackBerry 10, BlackBerry Classic, or uh, Windows, uh, Windows Phone 8 stuff? Um, so, on the BlackBerry Forensics Day, all BlackBerry devices will be covered, including backup files. So anything residual that's hanging around on a computer hard drive. Okay, cool. That's all covered there. For other smartphone devices, we cover the Nokia smartphones now, and those are huge. Windows Mobile knockoff phones, so any of the China clones that people uh. are getting, like your fake iPhone 5, your Goo phone. We cover how to handle that. Um, GPS devices. And then third-party application that's what everyone's using now. So, like, our Skype log right now, we would teach you how to break that down and get all the tracks and the videos and everything that's being recorded. Oh, that's awesome. So, did you have to physically acquire every single kind of different phone architecture? We did. We actually did. So, we not only... Android was very difficult. Each of the Android devices are different. Yeah. So, right. one of them, we'd physically acquire it, go through, extremely um, examine the file systems, and then do the same thing on the next device and actually pick apart where all the data is stored so we can teach how to manually recover it. Now, now Heather, that's based on the fact that all of the, the different carriers and all of the different uh, versions, uh, the, the diversity of operating systems for, for Android, correct? Correct. And then one of the sections, the knockoff section actually, we teach about a knockoff device. It's a China clone, but it has an Android file system on it. Hmm. So you have to examine it as a knockoff and as an Android, or you miss the data. Oh, man. Hmm. So now, do students get a smartphone if they sign up for this class? Actually, in the beta, you can win a tablet. 
Okay. If you find mistakes and make suggestions. So, yes, we are auctioning off for the first two betas. They will get a prize for the lucky person, I should say. Not everyone. Gotcha. But what they do get, um, here we talk about the advanced topics, and I'm going to show you at the end some of the technical section of this, mm -hmm. what the advanced topics include. But it includes 12 smartphone labs and one forensic capstone. And the labs is not acquiring, it's doing all the manual analysis. So trying to prove what the tool got, is it correct, or what they missed. Mm -hmm. And this chimes in on what else you get. So here are your freebies. Um, thanks to all the vendors who actually wanted to be a part of the course, Oxygen Forensics is giving the students an actual educational license that they can use. Um, Celebrate, 30-day license. IEF Mobile, 30-day license. Microsystemation is giving a trial license. And then we have all the other free tools and tools that were designed for the course. All right, should we go technical now? Sure. Oh, yeah. And again, I apologize. I was telling Steve I have a glass of wine because I drank all my pumpkin beer. That's perfectly and you're, acceptable. And you're apologizing Apology for exactly. Well, Heather, you know that the best way to teach a SANS class is inebriated, right? <laughs> yeah, that's when you're doing your best performances, right? Well, one of these days, ask Rob Lee about SANS shots uh, over lunch, one SANS conference in D.C. about five years ago. It didn't end well. Nice. I will have to ask. It didn't end that. in higher scores. Come on now. <laughs> no, but I got done like like half an hour early. That was cool. <laughs> Excellent. That's because he passed out. It's okay. Hey, it happens to everyone. I had a bad Austin experience. My first trip to Austin, I thought I was going to take out some college kids and drinking. It didn't go well. <laughs> well yeah, so, I had Eric Cole set me on fire. That was a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Heather, this is important. If nice. he comes up behind you with the candle, he will light you on fire. <laughs> it is very important. It is very Candles important. like this? <laughs> Drop and roll. Really? Candles, wine, and mobile device forensics. It doesn't get any better than that. You need to get out more. I know. No kidding. Well, actually, he is out more, right? Because yeah, he's, like, right. he's like in the parking, in the parking lot. lot. In the parking lot of the junior high school with his Trans Am and his, uh, <laughs> and his aviator glasses. No, wait. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. Sorry, Heather. You were going to actually talk about something technical. That's okay. So this slide here, this is an example of manual decoding. And here, all we're showing, this is actually a SIM card. But what we do for each of this, and I know it's a lot of colors and a lot of hex, but we go through each device and show how the data is actually stored on it, how to decode it and how to convert what was missed by the tool. So wait, so we do you teach get a, the students to go deeper. Do you give students a SIM card reader? No. Oh. <laughs> You're all about the freebies. Yeah, right? I no, am. No, well, come, come, come on. What about like, these licenses? Yeah, and you need Actually, and you need to be able to take the stuff home and be able to practice this stuff over and over and over. That is true, but you know what? Again. The SIM card readers are pretty cheap. That's not a bad yeah. idea to give out some SIM card readers. That's something we could do. That would be awesome. And I know Rob Lee's listening somewhere, and he's like, Heather is paying for this. <laughs> yeah. And, and Heather, the other one that's that's totally awesome that I've done in the past, too, is you know, completely random, which wouldn't make for a great uh, lab experience. But buy, like, see if you can find, like, a thousand used SIM cards on eBay. Like Larry did. Like I did. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those. And hand them to students and see what they can find on them with the SIM card readers. That'd be a cool lab. And that's always fun. And you know what? We did that with some of the smartphones, so I'm sure there's going to be some offensive material because some of it's from eBay, so we'll see what people can mm. actually dig out mm -hmm. that we're not pointing them to. And some are better than others, so yeah. It is true. Yeah. That is true. It's like a little treasure hunt. Yes. So this screenshot comes from uh, which tool? This is Physical Analyzer. Okay. Celebrates analytical tool. And it's good because it has the hex viewer in it. It has SQL like browser in it, so you can actually manually examine everything and do all your bookmarking, which I'm showing here. Each color represents a different portion of the text message. And then down below where it says the bookmarks, down here, it's actually showing you how what the value is and how it was decoded. Gotcha. And we go into this to the extreme levels, and then everyone has to do it manually and find what the tool actually missed. So that's pretty much the goal of the whole course is what is actually not just being presented to you. Mm-hmm. This is a very busy slide, so I'm not sure who has heard of WhatsApp, but it's oh, yeah. one of the more popular third-party applications that we're seeing. Yeah, they, they just got uh, they just got compromised. 
within the last day or so. Yes. Yes. Really? So yep. WhatsApp, a lot of the tools, when they pull out the text messages or communication that you're doing in these third-party apps, they look in one location. And what we teach you in this course is all the locations is actually stored and all the different database files. So this is just an example here of showing the contact SQLite doesn't only list your contacts, it actually lists your texting as well that's not shown in the original database. So we just try to, again, point out what's actually being missed and how to manually find all this data. Mm -hmm. and, and and Heather, from, from my experience uh, teaching uh, Josh's uh, Security 575 course, you know, the SQLite mm -hmm. 3 thing is very, very valuable for uh, knowing how to use SQLite 3 and, and some of the command structure for some of the mobile devices because that's like pretty much the uh, SQL database structure that every smartphone manufacturer uses. Correct. And you'll see that it's very heavy on iPhone and Android, sure. all SQLite. Yep. And, and, well, go figure, I mean, what, 93% of the market share between Android and iPhone. Yes. So, makes sense. And this was the perfect transitioning um, transition mentioning Josh's class. So, we do cover um, finding malware, detecting malware, and how to determine what it affected on your smartphone device. It's not as in-depth as Josh's class, and anyone that's interested in malware detection should definitely take that. So, this would be your more introduction to finding malware on smartphones and we primarily are relying on Bitdefender to just run within the tools and point it out but from there we actually dig into what was affected, was it sent to any other devices, what were they using communication wise, how did the infection occur and how to remove it. So we will cover all those topics on day two of the course. Excellent. And it's a big part of our forensic capstone at the end which is nice. What, what's um, so everyone always wants to know about lock devices. That's one of the most common questions I get is, how can I get into either my husband's phone, my boyfriend's phone, my own phone? It's always when someone's like, hey, I locked myself out of my phone, which you know is not true, <laughs> and they want to get into it. <laughs> yeah, so I, we I found, in other words, I, I found this phone on the sidewalk. Yes. Has anyone Please. ever come to you and said, I want to get into my husband and my boyfriend's phone? No, no, no but that would be nice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I also teach courses to the military, and you would be surprised how many of these guys come in with their spouse's phones. No, like, let's get into this one. <laughs> it's not so Always a good time. Well, we'll talk about pattern locks, pin locks, and complex passcodes, how easy it is to get into them, what to do if you can't. So we cover JTAG and chip off, so oh. the advanced methods of acquisition. No kidding. And then how to actually add those into the tools and get the code like you're seeing on this screen. Does the course come with a JTAG? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Paul, it doesn't come with a JTAGulator. Sorry. A, J this a JTAGulator in a soldering um, iron. Yeah. <laughs> this is microsystem, or microsystemation X-ray. And you can see here, it'll show you the legend. And then the pattern shows you how you would swipe. So you would swipe 6, 4, 5, 8, and then up to 0. And then if you do that, it actually works on the phone. And there's plugins now, um, Python scripts built into these tools that will actually, if you give them a raw bin file, it'll tell you what the code is. Yep. So they don't encrypt the passcode they do. on the image? They do, but not very they do, well. They do, but not very well? Yes. Gotcha. Um, if BlackBerry does the best, you know, these Blackberries, if they're locked, all criminals should have Wait, Blackberries. That's the message of the day. Blackberry, they make, they make phones? Cl classic or the BlackBerry 10? Yes. The BlackBerry 10s, yeah. The classics, actually, there's an an info MK, MKPG file on the SD cards that you can sometimes recover the lock code and then get into the device. And Josh covers that in his class. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, and the other, the, Heather, the other one that would be totally awesome for criminals is uh, Windows Phone 8 uh, because they actually don't technically have a file system. Yes, and actually um, I have communicated with one of my old SAN students and she was able to use Backtrack to get an acquisition of it. Well, like you're saying, there's no file system to do true analysis. It's not an easy process, even if you get into the device. Sure, sure. So, at that, what the the sad part is, is that no one makes apps for Windows Phone eight. Yeah, but you know what, Paul? Um, criminals don't use Windows phones, so we don't have to research it. <laughs> nice. That's my story, and I'm still. <coughs> it makes life much easier. Um, so, small summary here, brand new course, it's focusing on latest and greatest smartphones because that's what people wanted. People were sick of hearing about simple phones and CDMA, and they wanted the smartest. Um, advanced techniques to cover what the tools miss, 
you know, all these vendors are going to listen to this and then fix it, and then we'll always be trying to prove them wrong, and it's going to be cat and mouse constantly. But hopefully they will be able to get everything, and it'll make our lives easier. Um, lots of free demos and trial licenses and an actual educational license from Oxygen that does not expire for the students to keep. And then there are $500 discounts if they sign up for the beta, which is the first beta is the week before Thanksgiving, but it's sold out. And then the second one, Paul Henry's teaching that in San Antonio. And then the DifferCon in Monterey, I'll be teaching that. Okay. Uh, so those are the next upcoming ones. Gotcha. So the, now those are all this year, or are they uh, into 2014 as well? 2014 is the Monterey class. Okay. That's March. Okay. Interesting. And that's all I prepared. I don't know what other questions you guys might have, if any. Did anyone have any other questions? Steve has a question. You won't be able to hear him, though, because he won't talk into the microphone. He has five questions. Oh, yeah. five, five questions. Oh, no. Um, oh, oh, five questions. Uh, for the, uh, are we going to go there? Are we yes. going to do that to the poor? Well, I, I do have a, a technical question. Thank God. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, in, in terms of our acquisition, when you were mentioning about locked devices, I was recently talking uh, with a person from Colombia that teaches a similar class but for iPhones. And it was something that is quite easy just to get into iPhones. Uh, it was mentioning that there are practically two techniques. Number one is, is the device is jailbroken, he says it's super easy. The other one is that most people are actually using the 4-pin lock code, which actually could be very uh, easily brute force. Mm -hmm. But I had the understanding that Apple, if you try to brute force it, it would come to a time or it would actually wipe the device. How do you forensically brute force the four pin code on the iPhone? So we have not, um, it disables the device from the ones I've seen, unless there's a jailbreak that lets it wipe it, which that is likely on smartphones. If you enter a passcode incorrectly too many times, you have a chance of wiping it. But if it gets to the mm -hmm. point where it's disabled, you can use a bootloader to inject it before the bone or phone even boots up, then get a physical acquisition that way. But that will not work on the 4S, the 5, or the iPad 2s and later. So it's only so, on the older devices. So older actually age. having uh, the latest and greatest would actually protect you then, in the case of iOS devices. Excuse me? Sorry. So having the latest and greatest in terms of iOS devices would actually be uh, beneficial to you then? That is true, and I honestly have not tested the 5S or the 5C yet to see what's going on there. Um, the complex passcodes can be cracked as well if you have access to their dictionary files or if you think you know it. So I have done that to my own device. It takes a really long time, and it's not easy. But once you get it cracked, you can get a full physical acquisition of the device as well. But most people, like you said, use the four-digit PIN, which is simple. Now, one of the things I've been hearing a lot is, about people traveling and getting stuff at customs and having their devices confiscated. Uh, a lot of companies are actually telling their employees, uh, example Cisco, uh, if you jailbreak your device, you're violating our uh, policy, internal policy. So do not jailbreak your device. Jailbreaking and rooting actually makes people getting the data in your device a lot easier. Uh, is it true or is it just uh, FUD? out there by security managers to kind of protect their devices. I would say that's true because if your device is already rooted or jailbroken, there's already access to communicate within it so you don't have to inject it yourself with a tool. So you can bypass any lock because it's already given root access so you can be a super user by default thanks to the user and that's great when they do that for you. Exactly. Cool. What was that noise? <laughs> Do you have do you have like eighty yeah, smartphones yeah. sitting on the table next to you? Oh, it's not <laughs> me. No, it's, it's me. I have my iPhone, oh. uh, Nexus Seven, and oh. some other devices around here. <laughs> well, Heather, thank you very much for coming on Paul.com and sharing a little bit about the uh, course that you've co-authored. Anytime. And uh, again, wh when is the uh, the next couple of offerings uh, so people know? So the first one is in November, November 18th through 23rd, but sold out. And then San Antonio, Texas is Paul Henry's January 13th through 18th. And then Monterey, California, the 5th through the 10th. And they can sign up for all those classes on sans.org? They definitely can. 
Awesome. Thank Woo-hoo. you so much, Heather. Thank you.